today we are talking about best elements. This topic came about, and I realized I needed to talk about this, even though I've mentioned it before, but I need to specifically focus a show on it because there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of misuse in terms of best elements. Okay, first I'm going to talk about best element for you. Okay. Your best element, contrary to popular belief, it, oh, and, and another thing, I'll backtrack before I talk a little bit more on this. Why do you need to use best element in that certain situations, when you use the best element, then you boost the auspicious energy that you're trying to boost, <laughs> basically, right? And we know in feng shui, those of you who, who, who are maybe just newbies in the feng shui journey, in feng shui, there's five elements, okay? Uh, water, wood, earth, fire, metal. Water, wood, earth, fire, metal. And there are a couple of ways to use the best elements, and I'm going to go into that on this live stream. So the first one is your personal best element. Now, many people have the misconception or have been lied to, <laughs> which is even worse, that... Their best element is based on the year that they are born. So let's say that they are born in the year of the wood rabbit. They believe, they think, or they are told that that makes wood their best element simply because they're born in the year of the wood, uh, wood rabbit. That is not true. Okay? Because if you follow that, you might actually be doing a disservice to yourself because Chinese astrology is definitely more in depth than that. Okay. How is the best element actually derived is by the year and the month that you are born year and month, but month, we specifically look at the season. What season is that? What is the element of the season? So for instance, winter, if you're born during the winter, then the element of that season is water. Okay. If you're born in the fall, the element of the season is, is metal. If you're born in summer, the element of the season is fire, right? And uh, spring is wood. Okay. There's no earth season. And so we look at the season that you are born and the element of the day that you are born. So just like every year has an element, every month and every season has an element, every day has an element, and every hour, every two hours actually is an element. But in deriving your personal best element, we look at the day and the season that you are born. And honestly, there's no fast calculation on this. When I was trained in Chinese astrology, the portion on best element is seriously like this thick. So it's not something that I can cover on a live stream here. My best recommendation, if you want to know your best element, is to actually go and get a consult with a Chinese astrologer. Don't come to me because I, do, I no longer take clients on that for that, but work with a Chinese astrologer to get your best element. What is the best element for? Okay. The best element is really good for you to figure out your best career path, your best business path. And those of you guys who are in manifesting code, you have like a more thorough video on this, but I will. And by the way, if you want to check out manifesting code, the link is here. <laughs> manifesting code. You can check that out after you're done with this video here, but on, um, on that, where was I? Oh, so once you know what your best elements are, you then know what are the best career paths for you. What's the best industry? What are the best kinds of companies for you to work for? What's the best kind of business for you to start? Even what are the best kinds of uh, uh, stocks or businesses for you to invest in, right? So just as really quickly, uh, really quickly is 
I'll tell you in a nutshell what, what each elements are. So fire is, if you think about the sun, right? It's wide, it's got a wide reach. So fire is like media, entertainment, uh, the food industry, uh, metaphysical, religion, uh, religion based and spiritual based industries. Um, and, and marketing and PR, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Okay. Uh, earth is, is, uh, mining. It's anything related to, let's say, pottery or ceramics, things around, uh, uh, crystals. Uh, some grandmasters say insurance is part of, uh, like a, like a trust based, uh, business. So insurance, uh, is, is under there. But for me, insurance is actually metal element because it's a financial service. That's my take on that. Um, other earth would be, uh, construction. Okay. Metal, metal element. If you think about back then, right? Well, even now, money, coins, gold, that's metal. That's uh, anything financial related. Okay, so the banking industry, that's metal. Anything relating relating to law and the judiciary or the uh, or the uh, army, that's metal as well. Because if you think about war and military and whatever, uh, there's the there's the sword, right? That's very strong metal. So that's that's a metal element. Uh, the legal system. Right, judiciary. That's that's metal. Anything around numbers, like numbers driven, like data and statistics and, uh, and things like that. That's also metal. Water element. Water. If you think about the image of water, it starts from the mountain, it flows into the creek, then to the river, then to the larger river, and then the sea. So it's constantly moving. Anything that's constantly moving is very likely a water element. So water element industries would be import, export, the cleaning services industries, uh, retail, um, any like beverage industries like Coca-Cola would be, uh, would be water, right? Uh, what else? Oh, travel and tourism. That's water. Wood industries. If you think about a farmer and Chinese astrology is actually a lot, a lot about imagery, you guys. So, uh, wood industry would be like a farmer planting seeds, watching them grow, nurturing them, and then harvesting them, right? So um, industries such as teaching, consulting, training, coaching, uh, HR, those because uh, because you're 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 guiding people in terms of their your, their strengths and weaknesses. You're you're nurturing their talent and things like that. Okay, um, any creative. Uh, creative industries are very likely a wood element as well. Like a fashion industry, because cotton comes from plants, which is wood. Uh, print and publishing, well, at least, you know, like online print and publishing, it, it's still considered wood, but it's also a little bit of fire element. Oh, technology is fire. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, so print and publishing, because paper comes from trees, Right. So most creative endeavors fall under uh, wood element. What am I missing? Did I say firewood, metal, environmental? Is Shantanu is asking that's uh, that's that's actually so I was going to say this a little bit later. But nowadays, nothing is cut and dry, just one element, by the way. So environmentalist Shantanu is asking, Right off the gate, I would say wood. But let's say if you're an environ environmentalist and you're fighting for, let's say, sea pollution, then that would be wa uh, wood element with elements of water in there. Okay. Uh, what is it that I'm missing in terms of elements? Did I cover all five? <laughs> I did fire. I did metal. Wood. I'm blanking out here. I did earth. Shoot someone. Honestly, to be honest with you, my blood pressure today is a little high, so I'm a little fuzzy. Okay, I think I covered it all. So 
how you use these um, how you use these elements is thank you Joyce <laughs> how you use these elements is like I said if you are trying to figure out your career path once you know what your best elements are then you try to do that okay as best as you can if you're already in your 60s or, or, or you're close to retirement and you're trying to figure out what you can do, I mean, we, we try to be realistic, right? Which is why I tell my clients, um, I tell my clients, especially the ones who have like college age kids, like kids who are going into college, I normally do recommend that they do their birth, the birth charts for the kids so that we can see, as astrologers, we can see the strength and weaknesses their passion, what their higher purpose is, um, and also where, where they would be more fulfilled. Now, I have, you know, parents who want their kids to be doctors, engineers, accountants, or whatever, and your kid can be successful in it, but question is, will they be happy? Will they be fulfilled? Is their life mission going to be let down by this path that you've chosen for them that is not in their best element, right? So as parents, we need to think about that. You ultimately want your child to not just make money, but also be happy with what they do, be fulfilled with what they do, right? Um, and if you want to start a business, you figure out your best elements and you start your business in these areas. If you have money that you want to invest, right? You go to the... Um, stock exchange or whatever, you're like, okay, I want to buy some company stocks. What kind of companies? Then you look at them. Let's say if you want to buy stock for Facebook, that's fire because fire is internet. If you, if, if your best element is water, then maybe you buy stocks for Airbus or Boeing or whatever because uh, transportation is metal, right? That is the usage. A lot of people come to me and recently, I have to admit, I got one where I was, I got a little bit impatient <laughs> in that, Safrina, what's the color, the best color for my wallet? Okay. True talk here, you guys. Okay. Tough love. If you haven't done your feng shui, the best color for your wallet will do nothing for you. If you want more money, yet you don't do the action to open up the opportunities to bring that money in, having a wallet with your best color, best element will do nothing for you. Okay. I know it is, it is so easy to be sold the idea of, oh, buy this lucky feng shui wallet and you will ensure that you're all, you always have money in there. Guess what? <laughs> what puts money in your wallet? Right? What puts money in your wallet? It's through, you know, it's through you attracting money. The wallet does nothing. Okay? Not on its own. If I were to give a percentage of how important is it for you to where, let's say, if green, uh, if wood is your best element, how important is it for you to be wearing green, top to toe, green wallet, green shoes, green underwear, <laughs> right? Um, it won't help much if the function of your home is bad or if your actions do not align with success. Now, my best element is fire one of my best elements so you're gonna see i have red in my hair and uh if you want to know your money element it's actually the element that you control so this gets a little bit deep i might actually you guys in manifesting code i will get do a separate little thing on this but, oh, those of you in Feng Shui 2018, actually, you get a calendar, and the calendar actually tells you what your money elements are. Okay, so blue is my money element. Therefore, you see, actually, on this side, <laughs> I have like a bluish or like a dark purple, which is considered a water element. 
but why am I doing this? Like, obviously I have, you know, this is fire as well, right? But I don't just wear my best element. I make it maybe my accessories and, and everything, but my feng shui is done to the maximum. If I want to make money, the, the blue hair is not going to give me money, okay? Just because I have blue on my body doesn't mean it's going to make me money. I'm just aligned with my element, but I, I also make sure that I build up my business, right? So, so that's the thing. Do not spend, do not lose sleep over getting the right color for your wallet. Do you guys hear me? You think I am spending too much time on this? You have no idea how many people message me on Facebook asking me about best color for wallet. Okay, no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. You can, you can start, you can wear your best elements, but that should be your last resort. The first thing for you to do is to do your feng shui. The second thing you need to do is to deal with your inner energy with your meditation, with self-sabotage, with your uh, karmic energy. Those are the things, it's more work, but those are the things that will transform your life. Okay? Um, so, what are the colors? The colors for earth are anything brown tones, anything, you know, earthy. The colors for metal are white and and grays, any shades of gray, and any metallic color. So like gold and silver and platinum, aluminum, chrome. The color for fire is uh, red, yellows, and oranges. The color for water is blacks. Well, blacks. <laughs> There's only one black, I guess, unless maybe more blacks. Uh, black and blues. The element for wood is any shade of gray, uh, green, okay? Very simple. Oh, Safrina, what about this green? What about this green? Are they green? If they're green, they're wood. Honestly, stop overcomplicating things, <laughs> okay? Oh, Safrina, this, this yellow is more orangey than more yellow. Well, orange and yellow are both fire, by the way. <laughs> Why are you you're losing sleep over this? <laughs> Honestly. Uh, so, and Tess is saying gold. So is gold metal or is gold fire? You know what? It's fine if it's both, right? Again, don't overcomplicate things. Uh, and I think we were talking about, oh, we were talking about some industries are actually straddling two elements, and that is fine. As long as one of the element is your um, personal good element, that is totally okay. Okay. Now, the misconception, now we're going into the feng shui part now. The misconception is people think now that, okay, let's say that my best element is water, that I need to paint my room blue because my best element is water. Nuh-uh. <laughs> this is where the line stops. Your best element has nothing to do with how you do your feng shui placements. Okay? And I again, I hear this over and over and over again. This is something that you guys need to totally divorce, totally separate yourself from that, okay? Your personal feng shui or your personal best element has no, uh, no application in your home feng shui. Two separate entities. Okay. Now, best elements for your home. I wish, I wish, I wish. <laughs> There is, like some of you guys, you're probably still doing fast food feng shui. Some of you guys think that the element for the east and the southeast is wood. Therefore, you put, you paint your, or you use green colors in there. That the north is a water element, you put blues in there. That um, northwest and west is metal and you put more metal in there. And then uh, northeast, southwest is earth, 
and you put earth elements in there. No. Wrong way of doing it. Classical flying star feng shui. The activation and the remedy is based on the energy, based on the mountain star and the water star of the home. Now, this is where things start to get complicated and start to get confusing. So let's say you have a mountain star. And so if you guys look at, oh, I, I should have made, um, made an example here. Uh, maybe I can. Let me see if I can do a quick screenshot. Hold on, you guys. I might be able to. Oh, I don't think I can. Anyway, um, if you guys don't know what a flying star grid looks like, you can kind of uh, maybe just Google it right now so you have the, the grid in front of you. It's a three by three box, right? With larger numbers in the center and the smaller numbers in the top left and the top right boxes. This happens for all the boxes, all the nine boxes, right? The top left box is the mountain star. That affects your health and your relationship. The top right number affects your, uh, that's your water star. That affects any financially related issue. Um, so your career, your business, your investments. Okay. So in terms of how do you, what, what is the needed element for a room? It's depending on the mountain star and the water star, whether you want to remedy it or you want to activate it. So you, this is probably where I'm going to lose the bulk of you guys, especially if flying star feng shui is new to you. But let's say you have a seven in the mountain star and a nine as a water star. Okay. Nine is a negative energy, right? Especially a mountain star. It can mean third party in your relationship. It can be, uh, it is illness. It can trigger illness and stress. It can trigger accidents, mishaps. Um, so you definitely want to remedy that. Number seven is a metal element. What weakens metal? Again, if you want to do fast, uh, <laughs> classical feng shui, you need to be well versed in the five element theory. What weakens metal? You guys who, are, who have been following me for a while or, or, or have learned through me, in um, feng shui, my annual feng shui webinars and in manifesting code, what weakens metal? I'm looking for comments here. <laughs> water, water weakens metal. So then you need blue or black in that room. Okay, but good job, Renee. Good job, Joyce. But the nine in your water star which is a fire element. Nine is a fire element, and that's your, uh, your water. Um, that's the element that is activated or activates money energy. So you then say, oh my gosh, Safrina, if I put fire, uh, water in the room, it's going to put out the fire for my water, uh, for <laughs> the fire for my money, right? Which is kind of true. <laughs> so what you do is for that, you put fire elements to activate it. You can turn on the light, right? Have, um, you know, have a, a little bit more reds or yellows or oranges there, right? So, you know, there is no clear cut. Sometimes it's like you, you do get into a situation like three and four, right? Three as the mountain star, four as the water star. If you, three, which is bad for conflicts, you know, um, arguments for relationship and stuff like that, right? So if your relationship is very volatile and you want to remedy that number three, you put fire, right? To remedy that. But then that fire element also weakens the four in your water, uh, in your water star, which affects your money. <laughs> so then what do you do, right? So usually in this case, you know, it's not just the feng shui. I teach my clients, especially you guys in manifesting code. I teach my clients how to attract more love relationship, more health, uh, more 
uh, love energy, health energy, money energy, not just through feng shui, but through um, other manifesting tools, other spiritual tools. Because sometimes feng shui has a glass ceiling in terms of where or how much it can help you. Just like if you remedy, if you remedy one thing, you're also reducing the good luck somewhere else. It does happen. So in the case of the three on the top left and the four on the top right, I would go for remedying the top left because what's the point of money if you're always, you know, you're always arguing with your husband? What's the point of money if you, you're you estranged from your, uh, your siblings, let's say, right? So you remedy the negative first and foremost. And because the money energy now is also weakened by the remedy, right? Because what, what you're fixing also, unfortunately, re weakens the positive energy. Then you boost that up with your spiritual tools, with your manifesting tools, with your action. Okay, make smart, make, make smart money, career, business decisions, right? That's how you do it. So, um, so that is, that is basically the gist of it. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, you let me know. But elements, just as a recap, elements for the home is based on the energy of the home. Elements for you is based on your birth chart. Okay? Can you combine the two? No. <laughs> So let's say if the best element for your bedroom is blue, you you can wear blue if uh, water is your best element, okay? Or you can, um, yeah, so things like that. Um, any questions? Otherwise, I might, oh wow, we're at like 40 minutes, maybe about 30 minutes of actual content. Does that make sense, you guys? Did you learn something? Did you realize you've been doing it correctly? Did you realize you've been doing it the wrong way? <laughs> Maybe. I have a feeling most of you guys have been doing it the wrong way. So uh, if you want to know your, oh, another really good reason. When I do birth charts for my, uh, my clients, I only do it for my feng shui clients, the ones who do the full consult with me. But for me personally, knowing your best element Above and beyond the money related stuff, right? Above and beyond knowing what career to go into, what business to go into, what kind of investments for you to do is also health, which is really important. Okay. Health is wealth. So if fire is your best element, energy healing and spiritual healing is really good. Oh, by the way, <laughs> disclaimer, <laughs> my lawyer's going to have a heart attack if I don't have a disclaimer. Um, so whatever your best elements are, <laughs> if you are in a health situation and you need uh, prevent, um, intervention via, um, you know, visiting a doctor, getting treatments and stuff like that, go for it, okay? Don't, don't say, oh, Safrina, I didn't go for chemo because chemo is metal element and it's not my best element. Do not do that. <laughs> If you need a treatment, you go for the treatment and you complement it with your best element treatments. You guys got it? Okay. So if fire is your best element, then um, you energy healing. So there's Reiki, there's Qigong, there's, um, there's emotional freedom technique that you guys know I love. We just had a group healing session last night. Um, so energy healing, spiritual healing. I do believe in prayer, but don't just pray for health. You also do other necessary things to get back, to get your health back, okay? Uh, metal, metal is modern medicine. It's uh, needle jabs, it's, you know, it's surgery. It's also acupuncture, okay? Uh, wood is, you know, plant-based, you know, uh, plant-based uh, therapies, right? Like tra traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, any herbal remedies and stuff like that, you know, using roots and 
leaves and berries and, you know, plant-based therapies, that's wood. Uh, water is any liquid, really. So it can be uh, juices or broths or, you know, like Chinese medicine, for instance. Chinese medicine is actually a combination of two, at least the traditional way, right? Hi, Joe. So the traditional way, like the TCM uh, uh, doctor will give you a packet of herbs and then you make it into a soup and you drink that soup. So TCM, it, traditional Chinese medicine, it's actually wood and water, okay? Just like essential oils. Essential oils are plant-based, but it's, it's, it's in an oily, uh, it's in, it's oil, right? So essential oils are uh, plants and, uh, sorry, wood and water. Um, flower remedies, if you guys go to the health food store, you see flower remedies, those are wood and water uh, therapies as well. So as long as one of your good element is wood or one of your good element is water, you would find that you get better results through the right element therapies. Um, earth. Earth uh, is uh, crystal healing. Earth is like some people find uh, it therapeutic to sit in mud, for instance, because that you know, it takes away all the impurities and the toxins. So that, that. Um, what am I missing? Fire, metal, wood, earth. I did it all. Okay, I think I did. Thanks so much for watching. Now you know how best elements are derived. Now you know how not to use it and how to use it. Um, seek out a Chinese uh, astrologer um, if you're interested, uh, if you're uh, curious about your best element. By the way, everyone in my manifesting code does get that part from me. I look at everyone's birth chart and then I send out a quick note with regards to their, their best elements and how to use that. Uh, Tess is asking, the business I'm running now is a gasoline station and it was not right for me. Um, so gas station, water, right? So if it's not right for you, I, I don't know. Do you want to sell that business, right? If it's not for you, how, how drastic of an action are you willing to take? Right? Maybe sell that business and start a new one. Or if you're too far into this gas station uh, business, then maybe get another stream of income from something that is in your best element. Right? I'm not asking people to let go of something that they've built for decades. Right? If you are a surgeon and you've been a surgeon for 30 years and you find out that metal is not your best element, am I going to ask you to stop being a surgeon? No, it's not realistic, right? You've already spent most of your adult life building that career. But maybe your investment, you know, your money can be invested in your best elements. Yeah, <laughs> we need to be realistic as well, right? So uh, if you guys are wondering about this manifesting code that I keep talking about over and over again, Look it up, manifestingcode.com. If you want to know a little bit more about me and other stuff that I do, uh, and my blog is on fengshuiandprosper.com. And that's it from me this week. Thanks so much for spending time with me. And uh, again, feel free to share this with friends or family who might like this. I truly, truly appreciate that, and I appreciate you. And again, one more final call for World Refugee Day. Let us all make a difference in this world, even a small one.